Hi, this is Ian XO4, here to show you a super quick build for a trident farm. This massive column of water that you see here took only 15 minutes to build in survival by using very simple flying machines. It's huge, over 160 blocks long, 39 blocks wide, and stands at nearly 200 blocks tall. It has over a million blocks of water, much of it in a river biome. As a result, drowns spawn in here like crazy, which is really useful if you're looking to get a trident. All you have to do is travel back and forth along a platform or swim in the water and wait for a drown to throw a trident at you. Once you hear or see the trident, hunt down the drown that threw it. Once it dies, you'll have about a 1 in 12 chance of it dropping a trident, or about a 1 in 9 chance if you're using looting 3. Those are pretty good odds because you'll easily encounter about 9 trident wielding drowns over the course of one Minecraft night of hunting. That's not bad for such a quick build, especially if you're only looking to get a small number of tridents like one to enchant with loyalty to the enchantling, and one for Riptide. To get started, you'll need a stretch of river that runs fairly straight, either in the north-south direction or in the east-west direction, preferably next to some low, flat ground. They aren't that hard to find. This section here is 160 blocks in length, and we have another section over here that runs about 120 blocks in length. Obviously, longer is better, so we'll use this 160 block section for the build. You'll need to pillar up to nearly the build limit, or use scaffolding to get there. To find out where to start pillaring, go to the midline of where you want the water column to go, at the end of the stretch of river. Back away from the river by about 20 blocks. This is where you will start to pillar up. You'll need about three stacks of scaffolding, or temporary blocks, for reaching the build limit in the sky. 8 observers and 8 sticky pistons to make 4 flying machines, and about a stack and a half of honey blocks. Most of these will be used to make special wings on the flying machines so that they can spread water. You'll also need 2 buttons and 2 obsidian blocks. Ice blocks will be the source of water for this build. Try to have about 1 ice block for every 2 blocks of length in the river. This is a 160 block stretch of river, so I'll need 80 blocks of ice for this build. You'll need the same number of torches as ice blocks too, since we'll be using them to melt the ice. Also be sure to bring along a couple stacks of temporary blocks for the build. I'll be using smooth stone to make it easier for viewers to count distances, but you can use dirt. When you reach the build limit, go down by 4 blocks. Your feet should be at Y 252. From there, go out 14 blocks to one side and build the core of a flying machine. Add 7 honey blocks to form a trailing wing in this diagonal pattern. For the front half of the flying machine, the wing will be one block higher. Add 8 honey blocks in a diagonal pattern, followed by a temporary block. You can't jump when standing on honey. So jump straight up from the temporary block and set down the honey block. This new honey block is the trailing edge of another flying machine. We're going to build a special wing for this flying machine that will help us lay down the ice. Once you have this built, get into position with all of your ice ready on the hotbar, and launch your machine by pushing a button on the nearby sticky piston. Wait for your machine to travel about 8 blocks or so, and then start setting down the ice blocks, about one for every other space. Listen to the sound of the pistons to help you gauge when to place the ice. There's a lot of room for error in where the trail of ice can start, and also in the spacing between ice blocks, so don't be overly concerned if you make some mistakes. When you run out of ice, let the machine fly for at least another 20 blocks, and then add a honey block to the wing that you're riding on. 
This makes the wing too big to push with pistons anymore, and so it comes to a stop. Set down in an obsidian block to stop this flying machine the next time that it comes through. Add seven temporary blocks and another obsidian block to act as a break for the flying machine that you'll make later on the other side. Now remove your temporary blocks and get ready for the trip back. Make sure that you stand on honey when riding the flying machine, or you'll slip and fall off. Get all of your torches into your hotbar and set down a button on the sticky piston closest to the obsidian and launch your flying machine back. Along the way, Set down torches on every ice block. Make sure that you aim for the nearest side of the ice blocks. Don't place the torches in between them. If you make a mistake, don't worry. As I said, there's lots of room for error when it comes to the ice. When the flying machine returns to its original location, break down the wing used for setting the ice and torches, and finish making the rest of the leading wing. Like before, this will be one block higher than the rest of the machine, You'll use seven honey blocks to complete this diagonal pattern. Take a look at your build and repeat the mirror image of this build on the other side. When you're done, check to make sure that most of the ice has melted. Some of the ice, off in the distance, may not melt because it's too far away for the game to update, but as long as most of the ice is melted, you'll be fine. Like I said before, there's a lot of room for error. When you're ready to launch, place blocks on the observer faces for the middle two flying machines, and then go out and break the temporary blocks in front of the observer faces for the outer two flying machines. Your game might lag for the next couple minutes, as over a million water blocks will be made. When the lag is over, you can pillar down to level Y200 or so, to build a platform that runs right alongside the water. The ideal altitude to build the platform is 128 blocks above any ground below, so that mobs really only spawn in the water. You may need to adjust the height of the platform depending on your specific situation. I recommend hunting drowned at night, when it's dark and their spawn rates are higher. Drowned will only follow you when you're in the water, so you're actually very safe on the platform. Only the drowns with tridents can attack you there. Listen and watch for their tridents so that you can hunt them down. I recommend that you wear a full set of decent armor that includes Respiration 3 and Depth Strider 3. Also bring a sword with Looting 3, a shield, and some high quality food. And remember to press F3 and B to show the hitboxes to make it much easier to spot drowns and their tridents. Finally, check out the description for any other tips that I may have forgotten to include here. Good luck and happy hunting.